Soon Protectors of the Suna Soon Protectors of the Suna Sorry, guys. In alhamdulillah, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of our series entitled The Stories of the Prophets, alayhi salam. Excuse me. And today we're going to do the story of Ezra. This is a prophet that a lot of Muslims say they've never heard of. And he, he was one of the prophets of Allah. He's the one that the Jews worship. He's to the Jews like what Jesus was made to the Christians. They made Israel an idol of worship. They refer to him as being the son of God, the son of Allah. So again, when I give you guys the stories of the prophets, it's not based on what the people of the book said, because who cares what they say? Okay, you don't know if what they're saying is true or not, and who cares? It's based on what the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us from the authenticated uh, hadith about these prophets. So this today's story is not going to be long because it's not much mentioned about him except what I'm going to present today. So let's put the PowerPoint up on the screen. <clears throat> oh. Wait a minute. Okay, and uh, come on. I'm trying to get my PowerPoint to work. Come on. There it is. Okay, and again, this is the story of Ezra. Ezra. Ezra, alayhi salam. Now, Ezra is the one that Allah speaks about in the Quran. He's a man who slept for 100 years. And Ishaq ibn Bashir tells us on the authority of Ibn Abbas and other companions that Ezra was a, a saint, a wise man. One day he went to his farm, which was his tradition. And around noontime, he came to a deserted ruined place and became real hot. So he entered into that ruined town uh, and got down from his donkey and he took some figs and grapes that he had in his basket and took cover under the shade of a tree to eat his food. Then he got up to look at what remained of the ruins. But when he got up to look at what remained of the ruins, the people had been gone and all he saw was bones. So he said, Subhanallah, Allah, how will Allah ever bring this stuff back to life again, okay? And he didn't say this out of doubting what Allah could do, but instead just out of curiosity. And sometimes it happens. We talked about how our perception as a human being, uh, we have to, it's easier for us to believe things when we see it with our own eyes or we can taste it or touch it or feel it. So he wasn't really doubting it, but he was just curious how Allah will bring bones back to life and dead trees back to life. Well, Allah heard what he said. So Allah sent the angel of death to take the soul of this man. And Allah took his soul and kept it for 100 years. You guys know whenever we go to sleep, whenever we sleep, the angels take our soul. Sleep is the brother of death. Allah will have the angels take our soul. And if Allah wants us to wake up again, that he'll command the angels to put the soul back in. So he had the angels keep his soul for 100 years. And after 100 years had passed, you know, you can imagine how life had changed during that time. So Allah sent an angel to revive the heart of Israel. 
And when Israel came back to uh, awake, his eyes began to feel. And, and that's how he was able to witness how a law revives and brings the eyes back to a dead person. So when he came, his whole body came back awake, the angel asked him, how long did you sleep? He said, oh, I slept for half a day. And he said this because he knew that he went to sleep in the early afternoon. And when Allah was waking him up now, it was late afternoon. <clears throat> so the angel told him, no, you were asleep for 100 years. He ate and drank the food which he had prepared before he went to sleep. And then the angel said, watch this. And the angel revived his donkey. And after the angel revived his donkey, Allah said, look at your donkey. Thus we have made of you a sign for the people. Look at the bones, how we bring them together and put the flesh back on them. When all this was shown to this handsome, beautiful prophet, he said, now I know how, that Allah is able to do all things. So what did Israel do then? He decided to go back home. He rode his camel and entered into his native residence, but the people didn't know him, nor could he find his house. But he did happen to see a woman who looked familiar. And she happened to be an old maid of his. So he asked her, is this the house of Israel? She said, yes, but he's been gone so long, nobody remembers him. He said, I am Israel. He said, Allah took my life for a hundred years and has now returned it to me. She said, Israel used to be answered whenever he called upon Allah. So if you're Israel, pray for Allah to cure me of my blindness so I can tell who you are. So he made dua for her and she massaged her eyes and, and, and then he took her by the hand and he told her, get up by the power of Allah. And she was able to stand up and walk. And when she looked at him, her blindness was gone. And she said, I bear witness that you are Israel the prophet of Allah, okay? So after that, she ran to tell everybody that prophet Israel was back. And Israel had a son who was 118 years old. And he had grandchildren who were now lords of the, of the assembly. So the woman went to them and said, your father Israel is back. They accused her of lying. She said, I am not lying. I used to be your maid. He made dua for me. And now I can see and I can walk. She said, look, here he is. And the people stood up and saw him. And his son said, my father used to have a mark between his shoulders, a black mole. If you're him, show it to us. And so he showed it to them. And then they said, well, none of us memorized the Torah by heart except for my father. But Nicobazer, the king, burnt the Torah. And there was only one copy of it. And my father buried it in a place that only he knows of. He said, so if you were my father, take us to it. So Israel led the people to the hidden place and took out the copy of the Torah that he had, but it was so rotted from being buried for so long that it fell to pieces. So then Israel sat under the shade of a tree and the people of Israel gathered around him and copied the Quran for them. Because remember, he remember, he was the one that memorized it by heart. So the Jews after that began to refer to him as the son of God. OK, number one, because he was brought back to life. Number two, because of the evidence of uh, the Torah coming back down from the heavens through him. OK, so that's the basically the story of Ezra. As Ibn Abbas said, it is as the law has said, we've made you a sign for the people.
Ezra was died at the age of 49 and Allah resurrected him at the same age um, on, on the day of his death. And again, this is all told, taken from the Quran. And I went over this story with you guys before when we did stories of the Quran. So this is all that we have that we can say is authenticated of Prophet Ezra. And to this day, the Jews still refer to him as the son of God, and they still worship him to this day. Okay. Are there any questions about Ezra? Any questions? All right, I'm going to stop right here for today. Inshallah, next week I'll do the story of another prophet. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ila.